the Center for Strategic and International Studies on a, on a rainy day, but for a very, very important topic um, uh, and to hear from some important guests from Japan and from the U.S. Senate. I'm Michael Green. I'm Senior Vice President for Asia here and the Japan Chair at CSIS. We've been um, uh, working on and following uh, the issue of human rights in North Korea, uh, the abductions of not only Japanese citizens but Americans, South Koreans, and others. Uh, since I've been here, together with my colleague Victor Cha, the Korea Chair who couldn't make it today, <coughs> and we're always honored to host delegations from Japan, um, of parliamentarians and scholars and families who are keeping a focus on accounting for and returning um, the many, many innocent people who've been taken uh, against their will uh, by the regime in Pyongyang. Before we begin, I need to make a few safety announcements. I'm your designated safety officer for this event. Um, there are doors marked behind the stage, and should we uh, need to leave the building uh, because of a hurricane or whatever comes our way, um, our meeting place is after we go out the front doors, um, uh, the cathedral down the street, uh, St. Matthew's. We're hosting this event um, with these distinguished uh, visitors from Japan, um, and we're going to hear uh, from two prominent political leaders uh, and thought leaders on human rights in North Korea from the U.S. and Japan. Then we'll have a, a panel discussion with uh, family members, uh, parliamentarians, and uh, scholars who've been uh, focusing on this issue for an update on where things stand and what uh, the U.S. and Japan and other concerned governments and societies can do. Um, leaders in the U.S. Senate and in the Japanese Diet um, who have been focused on human rights in North Korea and on U.S.-Japan relations. Uh, we'll hear first from Senator Mike Lee, a Republican from Utah. This is a busy week for the Senate, and we really appreciate Senator Lee uh, coming here. It shows how important this issue is uh, for our Congress. Senator Lee is a member of the Judiciary Committee. He's the chairman of the Antitrust, Competition, Policy, and Consumer Rights Subcommittee. He's on other consumers in the uh, other committees in the Senate focusing on economic and energy issues. Uh, he's very familiar with this topic. He was an outspoken uh, member of the Congress on the tragic death of uh, Otto Wambier. Um, he co-sponsored Senate Resolution 92, which called on the U.S. government to continue investigating the disappearance of David Snedden, who went missing in China in 2004. Some of his family members will be joining us today, and we want to recognize them. Um, after Senator Lee, we'll turn to his Japanese counterpart, um, Keiji Furia, a member of the lower house uh, from Gifu Prefecture, Liberal Democratic Party. Uh, Mr. Furia is currently director of the lower house uh, of the Diet Commission on the Constitution and a member of the Standing Committee on Fundamental National Policies. He's been working on this issue in particular uh, for a long time. He was minister in charge of the abduction issue uh, from 2012 to 2014, continues to be one of the leaders uh, in the diet um, on working for the return of Japanese citizens abducted by North Korea. He's going to have to leave a little bit earlier um, after his remarks to catch a flight um, to welcome a delegation in Tokyo. We're delighted he can hear. So um, let me uh, ask you to join me in welcoming Senator Lee, and then we'll welcome uh, Representative Furio. Senator? Thank you very much for that kind introduction. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. I'd like to extend my thanks to Michael Green uh, at the Center for Strategic and International Studies for uh, hosting this important event and making it possible, and also to the Embassy of Japan for inviting me to speak. It's a real honor. I'd also like to uh, welcome our friends from Japan, uh, Keiji Furuya and Eriko Yamatani from the National Diet as well as uh, Takuya Yakota. Your countrymen have suffered a great deal as a result of North Korea's criminal abductions, and this is an issue that we need to address. No other country has done more to document these abductions than Japan, or to make sure the world recognizes them for exactly what they are, which is uh, a series of component parts of an international crime spree by the North Korean regime. A regime that has no respect for borders, for the laws of men, or for the higher law that says every human soul 
is entitled to dignity and respect. So thank you again to our Japanese friends for being here and for your important work on behalf of your countrymen and all who have been seized by North Korea. Just a few decades ago, we wouldn't be here having this conversation. North Korea's abductions were even less well known and accepted as facts as they are today. They were the stuff of rumor, of conjecture. In some circles, they were thought of as the stuff of conspiracy theories. To some, they seemed too tenuous and too far-fetched, even for the notorious hermit kingdom. That was how it once seemed in the case of David Snedden, the 24-year-old Brigham Young University student who vanished in China's Yunnan province in 2004. I'm pleased to note, by the way, that uh, David's mother, Kathleen, and his brother, James, are going to be joining us today. After a cursory investigation, Chinese officials concluded that David Snedden must have died while hiking alone through the Tiger Leaping Gorge, a tragic accident in a steep river canyon, a loose rock, perhaps, or a bad fall. Bad luck, for sure, but nothing more. But David's kin retraced his steps. His brother Michael, his brother James, and his father Roy went to that same area. And after retracing the steps that their brother and son took, they found that the official story simply did not add up. For one, David was an experienced hiker and a responsible kid. Uh, he was an Eagle Scout, in fact. Could he have fallen into such peril on a well-traveled trail? Unlikely. Supposing he had, where exactly was the body? Over a decade later, no remains have ever been produced. Eyewitness testimony, meanwhile, placed David in a Chinese city at the end of his planned hiking road. This suggests he passed safely through the gorge before disappearing. He would have had to have circled back through the gorge in order for the official explanation to be correct. Again, unlikely. And then there were some other curious details. David Snedden was traveling near routes often utilized by the so-called Asian Underground Railroad, a network of mostly Christian missionaries who helped North Korean defectors flee to safety. North Korean spies are known to operate along the route, intercepting defectors and returning them to captivity on the Gulag Peninsula of North Korea. And Snedden was last seen leaving a Korean restaurant Korean restaurants are reportedly used as outposts for North Korean espionage and illicit enterprise. Finally, and perhaps most tellingly, one month before David's disappearance, North Korea took the rare step of releasing an American captive, 64-year-old Charles Jenkins. North Korea had forced Jenkins to teach English to its spies at a military university during his almost 40-year captivity. After his release, the regime needed a substitute teacher. David Snedden, as it turned out, was an Asi Asian languages major. And his familiarity with these languages was more than just academic. David had served as a missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints for two years, interacting with and teaching people on a regular basis in Korean. And he was also fluent in Mandarin. Again, this made him an ideal target. Subsequent intelligence from inside North Korea has supported what these facts strongly suggest. It is likely David Snedden was taken by the North Korean regime in 2004. He likely has been held captive in that country ever since then. David Snedden's possible abduction is one link in a chain of North Korean crimes that stretches back to the Korean War. When the regime ordered the capture of over 80,000 prominent South Koreans, since the armistice, North Korea has used a combination of flattery and force to abduct many, many thousands more. The regime tricked more than 90,000 ethnic Koreans in Japan into traveling to North Korea to build a worker's paradise they could never leave. Roughly 100 other disappearances in Japan have been attributed to Pyongyang. In many cases, individuals were snatched from Japanese shores and spirited away on speedboats 
never again to be seen. Similarly, nearly 4,000 South Korean fishermen have been abducted after run-ins with North Korean intelligence vessels. Recent reports indicate that North Korea has been hunting in China to discourage involvement in the Asian Underground Railroad. And Pyongyang's reach extends far beyond the Asia-Pacific region. Its operatives have attempted kidnappings in such familiar locales as London, Copenhagen, and Beirut. All told, the Committee for Human Rights in North Korea estimates that as many as 180,000 people have been abducted by North Korea. 180,000. That's just a few thousand less than the population of Salt Lake City. The regime likely acknowledged this in the hope that it would lead to a multi-billion dollar reparations payment from Japan. これは日本による資金での報酬につながると期待していましたけれどもいろいろな調査官が調べているのを相手にしなかったです北朝鮮による拉致は忘れ去られがちです北朝鮮はいろいろなとんでもないような文明国家に対する強行が良くなっていますイランやシリアといった7つもの国家と兵器の取引が多くなっていますまた、キム一族の暗殺にも及んでいますこれはマラシアの空港で起きたことでありますそしてまた北朝鮮の人たちをどんどん It's made rapid strides in its atomic weapons and ICBM programs, raising the terrible specter of a nuclear Armageddon once again. In stark contrast to its nuclear program or its missile tests, North Korea's abductions seem like quiet crimes. But to us, they feel anything but quiet. They're marked not by seismic activity, but by the absence of dear loved ones, by late night walks never completed, by fishing boats that never return, by hikers who vanish from the trail. Because of the quiet nature of North Korea's abductions, it's up to the free world to be loud. We have to be like the Snedden family in Utah. And uh, I, want, I want to welcome Kathleen Stedden, uh, David's mother, and I want to welcome James Stedden, uh, James's brother, and thank them for being here and for their faithfulness in bringing attention to this issue. And we have to also be like the Yakota family in Japan, who have advocated tirelessly for their respective loved ones and all other abductees. In that spirit, I, along with several of my colleagues in Congress, have introduced a joint resolution expressing our concern about the disappearance of David Snedden. The resolution encourages the State Department and intelligence community to investigate all plausible explanations for David's disappearance, including abduction by North Korea. The resolution further encourages the United States government to work with the Snedden family and with our allies in the region to investigate the di disappearance and hopefully secure his release. This resolution is a start, and I pray that one day soon the Snedden family will be reunited with David. It's unlikely that we'll ever know the stories of all those held captive in North Korea. So great are its crimes. But we can do much for the few we know. For the few we know about, we've got to do something to help them. We can shine a narrow searchlight into the darkness of tyranny and wait for the dawn to break on North Korea. Thanks to all of you for listening. Thanks again to the Japanese delegation and to the Snedden family for letting me share their story. Thank you very much. Senator, thank you. Um, uh, if you could take just one quick question for me, um, we're uh, short on time, but if you have just a moment, uh, about um, next steps in the Congress. Um, I was the senior Asia official in the White House in 2004 and 5, 
<coughs> we didn't know what happened. In fact, in 2004, we didn't know about David Sned at all initially because there was no information. We did know that the North Koreans were sending agents to intercept the Underground Railroad, <coughs> um, and we knew that from multiple sources. Um, and so I think the, um, the call on the State Department to investigate all of these, but in particular, um, what you and I probably think is the most likely scenario, is absolutely right. What we found, and what I think the State Department still finds, is that China is not forthcoming uh, on this or on implementing sanctions against North Korea. So in addition to the resolution you mentioned, there's also legislation uh, to uh, an amendment to strengthen sanctions uh, on, on secondary firms involved with North Korea training and so on and so forth. Can you say something more about the prospects for Richard. legislation moving forward? I understand it's connected to the National Defense Authorization, the NDAA, or uh, I don't know the parliamentary procedure, but could you tell us a bit about the prospects for legislation that would bring to bear some more um, sanctions and other specific tools to get cooperation out of China uh, on some of these issues? There remains a possibility, perhaps with the passage of the National Defense Authorization Act, of additional uh, uh, pressure uh, that would be brought to bear by way of sanctions encouraging uh, China to be more forthcoming with what they know. Um, that legislation is before the Senate this week and there are uh, an infinite number of possible combinations of how something could pass in connection with the NDAA, uh, perhaps with that legislation in mind. I, I'm also continuing to push the uh, resolution focusing specifically on David Snedden and encouraging uh, the United States to shine a, a bright white spotlight on, on this issue and to investigate what happened here. Uh, what we know from our experience with, uh, with Japan and from the great things that the Japanese government has done, that when pressure is brought to bear, uh, when attention um, is brought to the issue of abductions, uh, that pressure is felt and that pressure can sometimes result in, uh, in, in favorable decisions uh, that we seek after. Um, I'm told that the, that the resolution, the House of Representatives version of my resolution has uh, just passed the House of Representatives. Um, we are, and given that it has received committee attention, it's passed out of committee in the Senate. Um, in the last Congress, the, it can be passed uh, through one of a couple ways. One way we could do it is through unanimous consent. This is not the kind of resolution that is likely to be controversial. It is the kind of resolution as to which we, we hope to achieve unanimity and that we'll be able to pass it out unanimously. Another possibility is that uh, uh, we might be able to attach it again to the National Defense Authorization Act, which is before the Senate this week and next week. And that's another way that it could, uh, uh, that it could pass and go to President Trump's de desk for signature. Senator, thank you for your work you and for much. your actions um, and for joining us. Let me turn now to your counterpart from the Japanese diet, uh, Furio Sensei, for some remarks. Thank you very much for the introduction. Is the translation working? Uh, my name is KJ Furuya. I'm a member of the uh, House of Representatives. Uh, I also I, I was formerly uh, the uh, abduction uh, minister, and then currently I am the uh, head of the uh, abduction uh, issues uh, caucus. And uh, today, uh, Michael Green and uh, CSIS uh, staff members, thank you so much for uh, holding this event today. Right now, North Korea has ignored numerous warnings from the international community and has repeated its nuclear and missile tests. Uh, the, uh, rec uh, yes, uh, the recent uh, unanimous adoption uh, was done uh, by the UN Security Council uh, of the resolution for North Korea. We must make North Korea understand that there is no future for them if they continue this pace by various methods, including further stringent sanction and by United States and other concerned nations. And along with nuclear and missile tests, North Korea has also been extremely insincere towards abduction issues. I'd like to briefly mention the history, historical background of the abduction issue. 
North Korea engaged, engaged in its abduction activities of Japanese nationals mainly in the late 1970s to early 1980s and continued somewhat in the 90s and the 2000s. Some of the media reported the North Korea's abduction issues, but the general public was skeptical towards such an outrageous idea that goes against common sense. The Japanese government and the ruling party at that time also had more interest in the normalization of the bilateral relations with North Korea, so they were rather passive about recognizing the abduction its issue itself. In the 1990s, Megumi Yokota, who became an abductee at the age of 13, became the symbol of the abduction victims and has received much attention from the media. Her mother, Sakie, was seen on TV frequently pleading for people to take more interest in the issue, which quickly resonated with the public, leading to the abduction issue to re receive much attention. Today, we have uh, Megumi's brother, uh, Takuya Yokota, uh, here with us. Under the circumstance, the National Diet members have created a group called uh, uh, caucus uh, for res rescuing uh, Japanese abducted by North Korea, uh, abduction caucus in short. Uh, this effort has invigorated the public discussion which cons consequently led the central government to officially identify the abductees. One may ask about the purpose of North Korea's abduction. It may be unbelievable, but some of the abduction victims who made it back to Japan have confessed that they were turned into instructors of North Korean agents and were forced to teach them how to behave as Japanese nationals in order for the agents to live in Japan for covert operation. Additionally, many printing engineers uh, were abducted for the purpose of fabricating counterfeit dollar bills, which was quite rampant at the time. According to the Japanese police agency, uh, North Korea's aggressive abduction activities led to possibly over 800 individuals to be abducted and 17 who have been officially identified as abductees. United Nations and other members of the international community, as a result of which the UN and other countries have taken up the issue of abductions and put more pressure on North Korea. Uh, citizens not only of Japan but of 13 other countries have been abducted or 13 countries in total have been abducted and uh, it seems very likely that David Snedden was also kidnapped in 2004 as the senator as the as the congressman uh, talked about earlier it's very likely that he was uh, kidnapped by North Korea. We have worked vigorously on the House and Senate uh, to take up Mr. Snedden's abduction for over two years. And as a result, a resolution was passed in committee and by the full House. On the Senate side, a resolution has been passed in committee and members are now working on a resolution by the full Senate. The strong leadership of Congressman Chris Stewart and Senator Mike Lee has garnered support from many uh, lawmakers. Uh, Senator Lee was here earlier, of course, and uh, thanks to their leadership, uh, we have uh, seen uh, resolutions passed by the uh, Congress, and I hope that one will be passed by the full Senate as well. I'm very thankful for their efforts. I hope that uh, the Senate will pass this resolution as quickly as possible. State directed abduction of another country's citizens is a criminal act that is equivalent to terrorism. Also, it's the ultimate infringement of human rights that we absolutely must not tolerate. As I mentioned, the Japanese government was originally reluctant to uh, take up the issue of North Korean abduction. Similar, the U.S. government initially pointed to the lack of concrete proof as a reason to avoid the issue. However, Resolutions by Congress have led to media attention, and as a result, I believe the U.S. government has begun to change its stance. The uh, terrorism, er, uh, kidnapping, which is a form of terrorism, is continuing even today. The United States took North Korea off the list of state supporters of terror, uh, but we 
very much feel that North Korea should be placed back on this list. Uh, North Korea has been in, uh, developing nuclear weapons, missiles, and I think that the United States and Japan need to work together intimately in order to uh, increase the pressure on uh, Kim Jong-un. Uh, further, in order to improve our uh, cooperation, uh, we need to work together in order to uh, help cause the uh, abductees' families uh, be able to meet with them as uh, quickly as possible. We have the five of us from the Japanese diet and uh, the Yokotas and others are visiting Washington for these two days in order to raise awareness about these issues. We will be meeting with the State Department, with the Pentagon, and with members of the House and Senate in order to secure the release of these people. Again, I'd like to say that I think that uh, cooperation between our two countries will be integral to solving this issue. And I think that we need to keep in mind what has happened with the nuclear issues, nuclear weapons issues with North Korea, and we need to uh, apply the lessons that we've learned in dealing with that country so far. I'd like to also uh, thank the Snedens and uh, James's brother for being here uh, today. Thank you very much. And that concludes my remarks. Thank you. Next, uh, since I have a flight to catch, I may have to leave uh, before the end of this meeting, but uh, Kenji Yamada and I may have to leave before the end. Uh, so first I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Yamada if he has anything that he would like to add uh, before we might have to leave for our flight. Thank you, everyone. My name is uh, Kenji Yamada. I'm from the uh, Japanese diet. Thank you for your interest in this issue of abductees from Japan. I'd like to say something very quickly. Uh, missiles and uh, nuclear issues, of course, are something everyone is interested in, but kidnapping really is the ultimate form of uh, uh, infringement on human rights. Mr. Yokota, I think, will also have something to say about this, but uh, people from, and this 13-year-old uh, girl, uh, Megumi Yokota, who had done nothing wrong, she was kidnapped in the middle of the night, and this is something that we cannot tolerate. For, the, for this was 40 years ago. Uh, she was a child when she was adopted. She's still being held in North Korea, has not been able to return to Japan. It's unbelievable this is continuing, and I think that uh, we as Japan must work to solve this issue, but I hope that you in the United States as our allies will work with us in order to uh, clear up this issue of people who may have been abducted by North Korea. We are working and doing it what we can, fighting as uh, much as possible, and I hope that we will be able to secure your cooperation. Thank you. And Mr. Yamada and I, as I said, uh, we may have to leave before the end of the meeting, and I hope that you won't take that uh, wrong. We just have a plane to catch. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Lee. Thank you, uh, Representative Furia. Uh, Furia Sensei has to catch a plane. Senator Lee has to vote. <coughs> um, uh, but uh, Senator Lee's um, staff is remaining to hear our discussions and participate, and we appreciate your political uh, leadership and wisdom and your, and your powerful words. I am going to invite our panel now to come to the stage so we can go into this in more detail. Um, so Shimada-sensei and uh, Yohota-san and uh, uh, Yamatani-sensei, please uh, join us up on the stage. We have a distinguished uh, delegation here, uh, not all of whom uh, are up on the stage. Uh, some are from the uh, Washington area, some are from Tokyo. Um, in addition to Furia sensei uh, we have uh, uh, Jin Matsubara from the um, Democratic Party of Japan, uh, who has been a stalwart um, and a consistent and persistent advocate for um, action from not only the Japanese government, but the US and others on this issue. Um, and then Yamada-sensei, Kenji Yamada, uh, and uh, of course joining me on stage now, Yamatani-sensei, and Ichiro Tsukuda, Secretary General uh, of the Parliamentary Group for the Rescue of Abductees from the House of Counselors. Um, and Susan Komori, uh, based here in Washington, who's been an important 
uh, advocate and link for the families and the members of the Diet um, with the U.S. Congress and think tanks and, and the Washington community and a, a pretty sizable delegation uh, uh, here from the Cabinet Secretary from the Prime Minister's office, which shows that this is an issue of policy and human rights that has the highest of level of attention uh, in Japan. And y y as you heard from Senator Lee, um, uh, a, a busy member of the U.S. Congress in one of the busiest weeks, um, this also has much higher level attention in the United States. Some of you may have seen the documentary um, that came out about um, 10 years ago. I think it was called Abducted in, in English. Very, very powerful documentary um, about the Yokota family. Um, um, and, and following them in the late 90s, <coughs> when uh, frankly, both the US and Japanese governments, the Korean government, thought that this abduction story was a conspiracy theory, didn't take it seriously. And uh, in this film, you watch them just uh, courageously <clears throat> and quietly and with great dignity keep the spotlight on this issue until more and more evidence came in. <clears throat> uh, much of it came in when I was in the government. I was on the National Security Council staff in charge of this issue, among other issues across Asia from 2001 to the end of 2005. Um, we, uh, in the Bush administration when I was there, um, kept North Korea on the list of state sponsors of terrorism uh, in part because of the mounting evidence that North Korea is engaged in abductions. The State Department legal office had very specific guidelines for determining whether a country was a state sponsor of terrorism. So what we uh, agreed on between the White House and state and the lawyers was that we would not lift North Korea from this list of state sponsors of terror until there was um, substantive progress on the issue of abductees. The intention was to keep the pressure on um, and, uh, and to recognize that um, this was a kind of terrorism, even if it didn't fit the exact legal definition the State Department had used. Unfortunately, in 2008, the um, uh, last uh, year of the administration, uh, North Korea was taken off that list in a diplomatic move that ultimately gained us nothing. Um, I remember at the time, uh, many, many critics in media and in academia in the U.S., uh, were saying that Japan was an obstacle to diplomacy with North Korea because Japan was um, keeping the focus on the abductee issue, uh, which had nothing to do with the nuclear threat from North Korea, which I found absolutely stunning because, and said so publicly together with um, colleagues here, others in the audience, because it goes to the very heart of the nature of this regime. Um, not only their uh, compl complete lack of any moral basis for what they do, but their trustworthiness and the degree to which they would go to preserve a regime that um, is uh, the cruelest we see in the world today. <clears throat> and um, yes, the American position on the abductee issue goes to the credibility of the American nuclear guarantee. Um, and uh, anyone who follows Japan could see that this was the case. Those days are behind us now. I think, as you heard from Senator Lee, and this is bipartisan in the U.S. Congress, um, there's much, much more um, recognition now of the North Korean human rights record. There's just much more evidence. There was a committee of inquiry uh, and a UN action. It's now uh, uh, an item in the diplomacy of every major country in the world other than China and Russia who continue to block efforts in the UN, but even they can't ignore this. Um, so uh, enormous progress has been made in building an international consensus and some tools, including sanctions and envoys and diplomacy to make progress. The tragic reality, though, is that um, we still have so many um, citizens of the world, Japan, South Korea, the US, Europe, who have been abducted and we have not um, uh, heard from or uh, accounted for or returned to their families. So this is a, an area where um, more has to be done. So I want to talk to our panel about their experience working on this issue for the past few decades and what um, both uh, in terms of broad policy, but specifically, specifically what they think the U.S. can do since they're here in Washington and what the U.S. and Japan can do together. Um, I'm going to ask first um, Takuya Yokota, who is the Secretary General of the Association of Families of Victims Kidnapped by North Korea. Um, his mom and dad were the ones who um, stood patiently in subway stations, met with politicians met with journalists when they were skeptical 
and persevered and prevailed um, and are heroes uh, uh, in Japan and, and well-known around the world. Uh, Yokota-san, I met when he came to see President Bush um, some time ago. He looks exactly the same. <laughs> um, and uh, he comes here almost every year um, to keep uh, the pressure on, to keep the spotlight on. So I want to ask Yokota-san first, now that you're here in Washington, um, what, what can we do? Uh, think tanks, intellectuals, media, the Congress, the administration to help you um, keep moving forward on this important effort. Yokota-san. Thank you very much for the introduction. My name is Takuya Yokota. Thank you so much, Mr. Green. Uh, before I introduce myself, on September 11th, we came, arrived in the United States, States and just this, a few days ago, uh, this day, and I understand that this is a very uh, heart, uh, heart aching day for the United States, so I would like to express my sincere condolences for you, the United States U.S. citizens. I, my sister was abducted at the age of 13 in 1977 on the way back uh, from school uh, by the North Korean agents. For 40 years, she has been uh, captured. And when, when, when there is any, um, when we talk with North Korea, either with Japan or uh, United States, a soft approach really, really never works. Uh, we really have to have a really strong approach to them. Uh, so in the United States, I would like to request the United States, there's one thing I'd like to request, is that for them, in order for them to be listed on the terrorist um, uh, designated state, the uh, United States used to ha have them on the list, but they have been they have removed North Korea from the list. Uh, so that may have led North Korea to uh, to to continue its outrageous actions. Uh, so um, United States, I would like to review uh, the uh, listing of North Korea on that list. Thank you very much. Is Hear from the other panelists before we do that, and ask next uh, Yamatani Sensei. Uh, Yamatani Sensei, you were the minister in charge of this issue, and you've worked on it um, throughout your career in the in the Diet. Um, can you give us your thoughts on uh, where we are? Reflect, you know, what what have you learned in this process? Uh, how do you see the politics of this issue in Japan or around the world? Um, and uh, what's the next step from your perspective? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for the cooperation of this, holding this symposium. And also, uh, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, I would like to appreciate uh, my appreciation for gathering here today and your interest in this uh, problem. Uh, I am a former uh, minister of uh, abduction issues, and then currently I am uh, have set a special committee to investigate the abduction issues in the Council of Counselors, and I am serving as a chair. And also, I am the uh, LDP head of task force for abduction issues. We have been doing conducting analysis uh, and also uh, looking into sanction strengthening. The Abe government has paid the utmost attention to this issue of uh, abductions by North Korea. Uh, Megumi and other abductees from Japan have been held by North Korea and continue to live in that country. And I'm sure that they spend every day wishing that they could return to Japan. The Prime Minister, Mr. Abe, and President Trump have been uh, very interested in the issue and are aware of the uh, deep nature of this uh, problem. And I am glad to, that President Trump is as interested in this issue as our Prime Minister is. North Korea is uh, has, for a long time, uh, tried to hamper our efforts. Every time uh, we believe we have placed pressure on them, however, they have uh, conceded something. Uh, President Bush 
was uh, strongly against North Korea's development of nuclear weapons and other activities. He called it a member of the axis of evil. evil. And so he was uh, placing very strong uh, pressure on North Korea and was working to try to gain the release of our nationals who have been abducted by North Korea. And this led to uh, Kim Jong-il actually uh, admitting that the country had abducted Japanese citizens. Uh, and uh, we wonder how many people there might be who have been abducted by uh, Japan by North Korea. And we have come up to a figure of 883 people. Uh, up to 883 people may have been attacked by North Korea. We're working to try to get DNA samples from uh, those people's uh, families. And up to now, 674 families have uh, submitted DNA uh, fragments. Uh, with the 13 uh, countries, nationals who have been abducted. Uh, there is uh, uh, included our South Korea, Romania, uh, and other countries. We have been working with families in countries such as these in order to try to bring pressure on North Korea. Uh, the nuclear issue, the missile issues, uh, there are a number of extremely uh, uh, difficult and serious issues with North Korea. We also need to work on the cyber terrorism issue. There are so many issues in which North Korea Korea is involved and we need to keep in mind uh, the degree to which it's possible that North Korea might bring us to the edge of uh, disaster. We need to do what we can in order to change North Korea's behavior. And also, we must never forget the abduction issues, the infringement on human rights. Um, Prime Minister Abe and his government have been working with the UN to try to bring leverage on the body to understand the gravity of these issues. Uh, the abduction issue and the uh, infringement issue has been the, is the uh, subject of a committee. And there's been a 400-page report that has been issued uh, to deal with this issue. And I hope that you'll have a chance to read the report to understand uh, the extremely grave nature of what North Korea has done also in order to uh, bring about a resolution of this issue. There has been an office set up in Seoul in South Korea. So there are num there's movement on a number of different fronts in order to uh, try to deal uh, as a nation or as nations with uh, the things that North Korea has done. Up until now, there hasn't been this sort of movement on a policy level. Uh, this is terrorism, state-supported terrorism. Uh, Megumi Yokota has been a captive for 40 years. For 40 years, she uh, is still uh, the subject of state-supported terror. That's my feeling. And Mr. Snedon's case and uh, other cases that we have looked into uh, and also there has been movement in the Congress with resolutions being passed and the United States media has paid more attention uh, to this issue and uh, the number of people who may have been uh, abducted. And I think that uh, we therefore have good environment for working more uh, energetically on this issue. We will be meeting with people from NSC, from the Pentagon, from the State Department, and also with people from the House and the Senate as uh, people who are involved in making law laws uh, we have come to the United States uh, over the past 13 years time and time again. And I think that the timing really is very favorable now. And uh, f I'm very grateful for your interest in this issue. Uh, Mr. Snaden's case uh, also is being paid attention to by the State Department. I understand there is an investigation underway that there's monitoring being done. And uh, I think that really uh, things are different now than they have been in the past. There's been more reaction, more forward movement. And U.S.-Japan uh, uh, cooperation is extremely uh, important. We cannot forget this issue. In fact, we must work to uh, change North Korea's behavior. We cannot, tolerate, we cannot tolerate their illegal, their immoral actions. North Korea uh, doesn't feel anything for human life. It's a savage country. 
they have uh, made counterfeit $100 bills. They've done a number of other things, uh, often with abducted technicians. Furthermore, in 1987, uh, North Korea uh, blew up a, uh, a South Korean airplane and uh, Yaiko uh, Taguchi, uh, a Japanese abductee, actually was forced to be involved in that plot also. Uh, she uh, has met with one of the Japanese abductees, and uh, North Korea is a cruel uh, country, and we must work for the liberation of people who have been waiting day after day for uh, to be set free. Uh, I would like to see North Korea be replaced once again on the list of state supporters of terror. Further, I hope that uh, the Senate will pass uh, a, a resolution and, uh, and be further involve itself in uh, investigations on this issue. Also, the uh, UN uh, Security Council, uh, I hope, will take up this issue and will uh, strengthen sanctions on North Korea and, and perhaps uh, pass a resolution or at least talk about passing a resolution that uh, deals with this issue. I've heard that there's been some movement in that direction. North Korea's uh, immoral acts cannot be to tolerated. We must solve the missile and nuclear uh, crisis. We've come to a good time, a good juncture for solving these issues, and I hope that uh, all of you will cooperate with us in our efforts to deal with all of these issues. Um, political scientist, I think, an academic. Um, I've been talking to him since I was in the NSC about this issue. He brings uh, uh, a lot of energy and commitment to making progress, but also uh, an analytical mind about how policy works in Washington, how policy works in Tokyo, and how to get progress. So Shimano Sensei, could you also give us your thoughts on what needs to be done and how you see the, um, the effectiveness of the U.S. or Japanese approach? What, what more should we be looking at? In 2008, the United States uh, took uh, North Korea off the list of state sponsors of terror, and it was uh, Condoleezza Rice, I believe, who was at the center of that, and I was very impressed to hear what she said, which was that she felt that uh, Japan was too concerned with uh, terrorism, and that, that was blocking progress on the nuclear and missile issue, and so uh, that hearing that, I really felt discouraged. I felt that uh, our th we weren't on the same page. Uh, with the United States. And at the time, uh, we were working to we were actually critical of the decision to take uh, North Korea off the list of state supporters of terror and to uh, be more lax on the uh, sanctions. We felt that it was strange the United States would be like that. Also, we felt that North Korea was uh, tricking the United States on the nickel issue, on the nuclear issue, uh, and the United States uh, took off the uh, financial sanctions and uh, other things that have allowed North Korea to push forward in its development of nuclear weapons. So we feel that this was a mistake and that we can't do that again. Uh, there's one thing I'd like to talk about that's really been discussed quite a lot recently, and that is about uh, uh, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, I understand that there was an interview with him at the Wall Street Journal, and uh, no, it was Mr. Gates, actually the uh, former uh, Secretary of Defense. Uh, he is a moderate and he's a, a very smart person, but he said that uh, the United States, sh we should uh, admit that North Korea has about 20 or 30 nuclear warheads and that we uh, should uh, place less pressure on humanitarian issues, issues and that we should deal more with these issues of nuclear weapons. You see, human right issue is, uh, in other words, to uh, postpone uh, the abduction. It, it not regarding a human rights issue is really equals to uh, pushing away uh, abduction issues or not putting, uh, no, not focusing on abduction issues. So uh, you see, uh, how can you verify in North Korea whether they are really uh, uh, making the promise of any nuclear uh, agreement that we had? That was the argument that I had uh, back then. And then uh, to, in, to, to trust the Chinese inspection in a nuclear inspection, it is uh, uh, 
because as if saying that uh, you uh, trust in in any um, uh, Chinese um, and uh, skeptical uh, medical practice and then see that that is uh, really trustworthy. But so there are there were arguments uh, such as when we in the face of uh, argument uh, by Mr. Gates, I was uh, concerned. But however, as uh, Yamatani um, Yamatani said, uh, and. NSC, um, DOD, uh, and Department of State have all uh, uh, told us that we will and in solid we will work together with solidarity uh, with Japan to work on this uh, abduction issue. So I would like to this to continue uh, between our two nations. Thank you. Let me pick up on all those themes. Um, we'll have a few more comments. We'll open it up for questions from the audience and also to hear from some of the members of the Diet who are here. Um, on the um, listing of North Korea on the state sponsors of terrorism uh, list, the, um, the I was opposed, I was out of the government, but I was opposed to the decision to lift uh, North Korea from that list. <coughs> um, uh, it was designed to um, incentivize the North Koreans to give us, the U.S., a uh, preliminary document on their, their, their uh, nuclear capabilities, uh, very, very um, superficial document that was uh, of no real consequence except symbolically uh, it would have represented Pyongyang making a first step towards transparency. Uh, the U.S. side lifted the um, North Koreans from that list and got no document, got nothing. It was a complete um, bait and switch. I'm sorry to the interpreters. It was a complete bait and switch by the North Koreans. The decision by the State Department about whether a country is or is not on the list of terrorist countries, in my view, has to be legally very sound. We're a country of rule of law, and when we make these determinations, it can't be for um, tactical or convenient policy reasons. It has to be based on a legal judgment. But I think, Yokota-san, you have a very strong argument because the assassination of Kim Jong-un's half-brother Kim Jong-nam in Kuala Lumpur um, certainly would constitute terrorism in addition to other information we have now about North Korean actions. So I, I, I think a lot of people who have been working on this would agree with you it's time to put North Korea back on the list of state, state sponsors of terror, recognizing that when they were lifted in 2008, there was no change in economic sanctions, actually. It was more symbolic than substantive. It's not going to create new economic pressure. But symbolically, I think it's very, very important uh, both to demonstrate as a matter of fact that North Korea is sponsoring terrorism and as a, as a, as a, as a demonstration of our commitment to this issue and solidarity with Japan and other countries um, that have suffered from North Korean actions. Um, one of the reasons that diplomats in the State Department wanted to lift the North Korea from the terrorism list is because in the diplomacy of the last three or four decades with North Korea, there's a roadmap that Republican and Democratic administrations have had for moving towards denuclearization and a normal relationship with North Korea. And there's a kind of a, there's a menu, there's things you get if you're North Korea, lifting from the terrorism list, opening of an interest section, uh, embassies, there's a, a diplomatic um, kind of, well, roadmap of what you would do. I think people are loath or hesitant to give that up because they still maintain the idea that there can be a roadmap towards a more normal relationship with North Korea. In my view, that's not a very sound position right now. Um, uh, we're not going to move towards normal diplomatic relations with this regime anytime soon, if ever. And, um, and so mentally, I think people have to drop the idea that we're going to go down this road map. Um, uh, that's part of the obstacle, I think. But it does raise the question I want to ask all of you, and I'll ask Shimada Sensei first, what is the role of diplomacy? You know, when Japan had, Japan, I think, has not had negotiations with North Korea in years, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. And when there was some diplomatic process, um, the foreign ministry did put this issue on the table, did demand information, did demand investigations. It was not entirely successful. The North Koreans were not forthcoming, but there was a, a process. What is the role of diplomacy, of Japan 
DPRK diplomacy? W or in your view, is this no longer uh, useful? And I, I'd like to hear from everyone, but Shimano said <coughs> you've thought about this a lot. Yes, uh, just like I, uh, the, 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 the government official has uh, testified yesterday, I'm not going to mention his name, but he said, he mentioned that the diplo this is not the time for dip diplomatic efforts with, it, with them. You see, to once you become an open uh, dialogue, uh, then uh, one would have to uh, loosen uh, the the sanction uh, towards them. So, my, in my opinion, we must uh, do this uh, behind the scenes uh, with uh, North Korea. I, th I I can highly encourage that. However, to do that uh, in open manner, such as six party talks. Uh, you see, China and Russia will probably uh, pull us behind, uh, and then so. Any diplomatic issues, we have been uh, tricked by North Korea, and so I don't think that is really a good way to go about. And then one thing to add on that, North Korea, the reason why North Korea is not releasing uh, David Snedon or Megumi Yokota, the big reason is because they are um, serving as instructors of the uh, North Korean agents. So, the people who have received the education from them are all over the world. Uh, so Megumi and David, uh, once they are released, and then they, the police or CIA will, will show you the list of people they are so, uh, so, um, skeptical, then they will probably point to certain people they have uh, given instruction before. So uh, Megumi and, Yo and, and David not being released uh, shows that North Korea's posture of their willingness to continue their uh, acti activities in the abduction and uh, terrorist uh, um, uh, activities. Uh, so I think uh, it is important to put them back on the list. And I think in, in that sense, I think it's important to uh, still work with uh, North Korea behind the scenes. Uh, you see, Japan uh, in the past has sent uh, tens of thousands of tons of rice uh, in the name of uh, human rights support. And so, but uh, from from our group, we questioned them, what does that really lead to? You see, yes, uh, five people did return to Japan. However, uh, the purpose of this type of human uh, rights aid did not lead to any uh, resolution. History proves that. Therefore, uh, the North Korean nationals, they are also the victims. However, uh, even with you approach North Korea as a state with goodwill, that does not lead to anything. That is something that we must really hurt, hold firmly. Therefore, uh, this uh, abduction issue is really has to do with this universal uh, uh, com, uh, uh, value, sense of value that human beings have. And then it is aligned with the issues that we are currently uh, tackling, namely nuclear and missile issues. In 2014, North Korea, uh, sorry, in Japan, there has been agreement between these two, between our two countries. But North Korea has no sincerity in the way that they deal with us. And last year, they have uh, unilaterally uh, released that agreement. So this, that has been repeated in the past. And when I was a minister of abduction issues in Geneva, uh, I have I tried to uh, talk to the uh, to UN and then the ambassadors uh, from China from North Korea uh, have aggressively uh, uh, spoke against that saying that they have certain reports and then I, I think that they are really uh, tactful with their uh, manipulation of information uh, that has what I have been feeling for many years about North Korea and compromising and trying to go approach towards them have all uh, from us have all been um, be, uh, betrayed by them uh, so right now the level of the threat has really reached the high the newest high 
and we must look back to the past of us being betrayed by them repeatedly and then moving on forward we must continue to pressure them and then for them to uh, change their policy and uh, the international society uh, must uh, make them realize what they need to change in order to survive in this international society. We must, in order to do so, we must continue, We must put high pressure on them. I appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, Shimano Sensei, I think you're you're exactly right. The I was involved in six party talks and bilateral talks with North Korea, and the media expects a big show, and and North Korea uses that. Um, and, and quiet diplomacy without drama, uh, without bribes, uh, is the way to go. If the, if the public, if the families, if the media support that, it can work, and it sounds like there's a consensus in Japan that's the right way to handle this going forward. The other aspect of diplomacy that's important, I think, and somewhat hopeful is uh, diplomacy with other countries that are affected by North Korea. Um, in Japan, the um, uh, attention on abductions is is very high level and very bipartisan. All political parties are strongly supporting um, your efforts. Um, South Korea has many, many more abducted citizens, but the South Korean politics are much more divided. Last year, we had a, an event here with uh, Kato Katsunobu, who was the minister with responsibility for uh, this issue, but also for the first time with his South Korean counterpart, the envoy for human rights in North Korea, and with his American counterpart, Ambassador Bob King, who, by the way, we invited today, and he's traveling, but he sends his strong uh, support and, and best wishes. Um, so I wanted to ask you about that aspect. We have a new government in Seoul, the Moon Jae-in government, is obviously a little bit more um, focused on engagement with North Korea. So far, North Korea has not reciprocated at all. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, the South Korea dimension in particular, it seems to me, um, will be more effective if the democracies and victims uh, uh, stick together. So what is your experience uh, so far trying to uh, work with others in South Korea or, or the politics of Japan-Korea relations on this issue? Why don't we start with Shimada Sensei again. Uh, the, uh, administration of President Moon has done a number of things vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, North Korea that we could call appeasement, and basically they have been brazen, not been pursuing brazen uh, policies. Uh, there have been attempts to deal with the assassination of uh, Mr. Kim in uh, Malaysia. So uh, for us, we feel that this is a good uh, juncture at which to work with South Korea. We do esteem their efforts. And I think that uh, the three of us, North Korea, United States, and Japan, we need to work together to place pressure on North Korea. We are always concerned about the historical issues that exist between South Korea and North Korea. In 2015, the United States and, I'm sorry, Japan and uh, South Korea were to have uh, finally and universally uh, settled this issue. This is an agreement between our two countries, but unfortunately there have been efforts to overturn that and there have been uh, efforts to bring up again historical issues and I think this has uh, damaged our efforts and so I feel that uh, the new president of uh, South Korea uh, has uh, people around him who uh, might perhaps present uh, difficulties, but I hope that there will be no uh, nothing that will work against uh, our efforts to improve cooperation between our two countries. Uh, Catherine and uh, other members of the Esden family are here today. Five years ago, I met you in uh, Tokyo, and uh, you, as his mother, said that you were sure that your son was still alive uh, and that uh, 
it was uh, very important to work to uh, try to figure out what had happened to your son and uh, Saki Yokoto, the mother of Megumi, also uh, is sure that her daughter is alive and doesn't understand why it is that we can't bring her back. Uh, so she's always had a very strong will uh, to uh, lead to a resolution of this issue. She's a very strong woman. She's very determined. And uh, I think that uh, this is important. And I think that uh, what we need to do is to have concrete uh, measures, countermeasures vis-a-vis -vis North Korea. I think that's important, especially as concerns the uh, nuclear issue and the <laughs> missiles issue. Matsubara Sensei and Skuda Sensei for a brief comment. Um, they've been working on this issue in the DPJ and LDP in a bipartisan way. Um, and uh, let's call first, uh, thank you, uh, on uh, Matsubara Sensei. <laughs> My name is uh, Matsubara, Jin Matsubara. I am from the lower house of the Japanese Diet. And uh, it's. I was also in charge of the North Korean abduction issue in the uh, Diet. I think that it's very important for us to put North Korea back again on the list of state supporters of terror, also to uh, deal with the all countries that have uh, abductees uh, in North Korea. I think that the United States should be a leader of a 13 nation a coalition, not with the UN, but these 13 countries should come together in order to uh, be clear about uh, the people who have been abducted. These 13 countries should demand a relisting of North Korea as a state supporter of terror. Ten years ago, I met Mr. Armitage, and he said that uh, terrorism is currently ongoing in the form of abducting, and he said that the uh, North Korea should not be taken off the list of state supporters of terror. Unfortunately, uh, despite our efforts, it was taken off that list, and I think it should be reinstated onto that list. Another thing I'd like to say is that the nuclear issue, issue and the uh, kidnapping issue is something that uh, we can use to uh, uh, have leverage on North Korea. I think that we need to deal with uh, a number of different issues. And I think that this abduction issue might be a way for us to sort of reel in North Korea. And that might serve as a way to deal with nuclear issues and emissional issues as well. So I think that, uh, as was expressed earlier, this is uh, this abduction issue and the nuclear issue really are part of the same continuum. And so I feel that we need to work on this issue of uh, infringement on human, human rights by North Korea. And I think that um, the United States must be at the center of those efforts. And I hope that, uh, Dr. Green, you will be able to uh, do something in that regard. Thank you. My name is... I'm the Secretary of the uh, members of Diet working to resolve this issue in uh, Niigata, which is the home to uh, Megumi uh, Yokota. Uh, I am also from Niigata, and when she was 13 year old, she was abducted and I happened to be 14 years at the time, and I was actually at the same school as she was. And so her issue is something that really affects me directly. And this is something that I can never forget. And it was an extremely large event in my life. And so uh, I am working with her parents and with uh, other people in order to try to resolve this issue. One thing I'd like to say today is that the international community uh, needs to be very strong in strengthening pressure on North Korea. Five abductees were returned to Japan thanks to Prime Minister Koizumi and the Bush administration had designated North Korea as a member of the Axis of Evil. And it was exactly at that time that there was a new development in the abduction issue. And that's something that we need to keep in mind when we try to work to increase pressure on North Korea. Uh, this is true not only of abductions, but also of the nuclear and missile issues. We need to keep that in mind. Another thing is that uh, there is definitely a way to solve this issue. And we need to find that um, 
string that we can pull on uh, in order to be able to solve this issue. We need to work with the State Department, with the Pentagon, and with members of the international community in order to uh, increase pressure on North Korea. We need to work together uh, to do this, and I think that this will be extremely important in eventually solving this issue. Thank you. So from Senator Lee's comments and um, Fuya sent his comments earlier and then from the panel and from the floor, we've heard some very concrete uh, lines of action, uh, lines of effort um, that uh, we can take away from this. Um, first, uh, we've heard about the importance of designating North Korea as a state sponsor of terror in light of everything that has happened. Uh, um, Senator Lee uh, is pushing for a deliberate and concerted um, investigation of what happened uh, to David Snedden. Um, uh, that uh, will require intelligence resources and diplomatic resources. <clears throat> um, my own personal uh, sense from having been in government for five years is if, um, uh, if, if uh, Senator Lee doesn't prevail, that will not happen naturally in the bureaucracy. So that's an important line of action to get some answers and progress. Uh, we've heard about greater um, uh, linkages with the 13 countries that have also lost citizens to North Korea, um, including, of course, the United States. I would put in a particular um, uh, appeal for finding ways to work with the Moon Jae-in government because South Korea is going to be the most influential uh, of, those, of those countries in many respects. If the U.S. and Japan and Korea are together on this, as Shimada Sensei said, um, that's harder, much harder for Beijing uh, to ignore. Um, there's one more I'd put on the list, which is um, the importance of replacing Bob King uh, with a new ambassador for North Korean human rights. There are press stories that the State Department is going to get rid of that position um, as a general cleaning up of special envoys. Um, a lot of senior um, officials think it's inefficient to have so many special envoys when the Assistant Secretary for Asia should be doing that. But I can tell you that you need the special envoys. You need someone who is um, accountable specifically on that issue to Congress and the public and who will cut across bureaucratic lines and not be afraid to upset diplomatic relations to get some progress. I don't know what the plan is in the State Department, but the press stories are that that position, the Human Rights Envoy, will be uh, eliminated. And I, um, I suspect a lot of members of Congress are going to push back against that. Um, I want to open it up for some questions. I also want to invite um, David's family, if you'd like, uh, to say something. Uh, we appreciate very much your being here what you're going through and your, your perseverance. Um, this affected me a lot. I learned about it when I was in the NSC, but I also was an Asian language uh, uh, graduate, not of Brigham Young, traveling around the region. Um, if you'd like to say something before we're done, I'd invite that. You can think about it. I'll, I'll call on the audience uh, in the meantime. Um, so let's open it up if, if for the audience more broadly. Um, if you have questions for the panel uh, on the status of this issue or ideas you have or, or um, suggestions, uh, or questions, we welcome it. And we have microphones in the back. Um, well, let me then um, ask if, 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 you, if you'd like to say something. I don't want to put you on the spot. I think we'd appreciate it. We've heard from Megumi's brother. I think it'd be very good to hear from David's, David's brother as well while we're convened here. Do you have a microphone? Thanks. I guess I'll stand. Uh, so my name is James Snedden. I'm the older brother of David Snedden. Uh, these are obviously not planned remarks, but I will try my best to gather my thoughts, and I will speak probably very directly and maybe even from the heart. Um, first of all, for the families who are here, uh, Mr. Yokota specifically, we thank you for the support and uh, your examples for us. I know, excuse me. I know my mother specifically has mentioned your mom and how much she appreciates her diligence and vigilance in this matter. Um, as you see, they're no longer young and your mother's been suffering for 40 plus years. I know excuse me, I know what it feels like as a son to watch a mother suffer for loss of a child. Um, so certainly the heartache is real and uh, the sorrow remains. 
So first of all, thank you and all those families and all, all of you who support this issue. I'm glad for these forms and that it keeps this a center of attention. That said, some of the dialogue, the dialogue I hear today, and this is where you're going to get the candid James, I find a little bit silly <laughs> that we debate whether or not North Korea is a state of terrorism is silly. There are, there are clearly things that are evil and clearly things that are good. And if you were to look at North Korea and use them, use the analogy of an individual or possibly a child, they do nothing but throw tantrums and act immaturely on the world stage. In my mind, the behavior is clear. If it was an individual, we would take them and we would incarcerate them, period. So why do we debate these things? They absolutely must be a terrorist nation. I don't think this is a debatable subject. <sighs> Obviously, there's diplomacy. There's nation states, there's lots of things that people will say I'm, I'm naive and, and we have to work amongst, you know, people and policies and government officials. And I, I understand that I'm not a foolish man, but I think these things are almost silly at this point. They have played the debate and, 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 and the negotiation game superbly. And as, from my perspective, we have received nothing in return. A lot of these comments have been stated just along those lines. So we treat them like the child they are. I agree with diplomacy behind the scenes. Don't give them the ability to use the press to their advantage. And, and you know, obviously move forward. I think at the end of the day, our family feels very strongly this is much more than David or Megumi or these abductees. Certainly that is an area of focus for us. But ultimately, this is about the people of North Korea who are oppressed and who cannot live humane lives for the most part. I'll tell of two or three stark experiences for me that go back 20 plus years. I lived in Japan for five years. I started my career actually in Japan. And I remember seeing a documentary on NHK where they had taken hidden cameras in and they were filming the conditions of a starving nation. And I saw children in the street drinking out of puddles of mud. And that was 20 years ago. I saw a documentary recently about a doctor from Mongolia that went in and did, I believe, cataract surgeries for the citizens of North Korea. And I'll never forget when they took the bandages from their eyes, the first time any of them could see in years, the doctor there in front of them who had helped them, there was not a simple thank you. They ran immediately to a wall with a picture of the Kim regime, I think it was Kim Jong-il at the time, and said, thank you, great leader. Why do I share these things? The fact that you have a society where people don't recognize natural gratitude for someone who helps them see, either with fear or the inability to actually understand the human dynamic. When you see children drinking muddy water in the street, that is oppressive beyond any description. To not call that a terrorist state to not call that wrong, to not call it for what it is, we are irresponsible as citizens in free societies. And we need to call it what it is. It's not a debate anymore. It is what it is. And we believe it's time not only to bring David home, but to free the people of North Korea somehow. I think the debate is over in my mind. That's my words. Thank you. Um, 
appreciate your your comments. Um, they're spot on. Um, this is. Uh, I hope you appreciate it on the stage. You're not hearing a debate. <laughs> we, we all agree with you. And now how do we um, galvanize this growing consensus in the U.S. and Japan, spread it to other countries, um, get, very, get more concrete action, get more resources, get more focus, get a special envoy in North Korea who will focus on this. Um, and I hope today helps. Um, uh, CSIS does strategy and policy, but we're human beings. And this is a horrific, horrific state. Um, and we've had a lot of um, events here on North Korea. Um, and uh, I think, speaking for my colleagues, Victor Cha and um, John Hamry and others, um, we're going to keep a uh, focus on this and appreciate very much um, our visitors from Japan um, and, and, and to this Ned family for coming. <coughs> um, we'll have more on this. Um, and I uh, uh, hope you all will keep, I know you will, uh, keep focused on it as well. Ma'am, would you just? Uh, uh, I think it, yeah, it's appropriate we, we hear from from David's mom before we finish. Um, when David first was dis discovered that he could be in North Korea, a lot of people thought we were crazy, did not accept it. And Mr. Yatoto, I want to make sure you let your mother know. When I get discouraged, I think of her, and I keep going. And I'm just so grateful for her example. The second point I want to make is, if anything comes out of this, I want to see the people of North Korea free. That's my goal. If we've sacrificed our son and it brought tension to it and helps North Korean people have the freedom that we enjoy and the standard of living, I'm a dreamer, I will be very grateful. Thank you for what you're doing here today. Thank you, ma'am, and thank you both for, uh, you know, bringing us back to the people of North Korea. We went uh, an hour and 20 minutes focusing on the, the tragedies and the challenges we're facing as open democratic societies, and I'm really grateful to you for bringing it back to the fact that there's a colossal scale of suffering within North Korea. Um, thank you all for coming today. We'll conclude now. Um, thank you for the families, for your um, courage and persistence. Thank you for the scholars and political leaders for your consistent leadership on this, and thank you all for coming. We'll, uh, we'll adjourn now. Thanks very much.